Thank you, Council. Um, as you can see, we are five. Although the hearing was, was uh, I mean, the case was heard by six judges. Uh, the Honorable just says, Mokin Wanjala had to travel uh, this morning out of the country, but he assigned the judgment, the majority judgment, so that's why he's not here. Uh, the, judgments, the judgments are quite long. We propose to skip some parts of, of, of the judgment, but of course you will get uh, copies immediately we get out of here. So we don't have to read the, the, entire, the entire, especially the descriptive bit of it. We don't need to read uh, uh, the entire judgment. I don't know if you, you, you can permit us to do that. Uh, rather than reading the whole thing, we will read and perhaps until even five, six o'clock if we read the, the entire judgment. So what we propose is we skip some parts, but of course read the, the, the areas uh, that we need to emphasize. Uh, with the right of that, you, you'll get copies uh, soon after we get out of, of court. That appears uh, reasonable. Thank you. Uh, we will start with the, with the majority judgment, and I will ask just uh, Lenaola to begin. Thank you, Chief Justice. <clears throat> this is a summary of the introduction, the petitioner's case, and the case for the first uh, uh, interested party, for the respondent and the second interest party, uh, for the amicus. On the 8th of August 2017, Kenya held a second general election under the 2010 constitution and Kenyans from all walks of life took to 40,883 polling stations across the country to exercise their rights to free, fair, and regular elections under Article 32 of the Constitution. That date is significant because it was the first time that a general election was being held pursuant to Article 101 of the Constitution, which decrees the holding of general elections every five years on the second Tuesday of August in the fifth year. The general election was also held for the first time and an elaborate regime of electoral laws, including amendments to the Elections Act, made to introduce the Kenya Integrated Electoral Management System, KIMS, which was a new device intended to be used in the biometric voter registration and on the election day for voter identification, as well as the transfer of results from polling stations simultaneously to the Constituent Selling, Selling Center, the CTC, and the National Selling Center, the NTC. The membership of the first respondent, the IEBC, had also been changed barely seven months to the general election. On August 18, 2017, Raila Amolo Odinga and Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, who were the presidential and deputy presidential candidates, respectively, of the Nasa Coalition of Parties and the Orange Democratic Movement Party ticket and White Party Movement Party ticket, filed this petition challenging the declared result of that election. The petitions in the petition inter alia aver that the IEBC conducted the election so badly that it failed to comply with the governing principles established under Articles 1, 2, 4, 10, 38, 81, 82, 86, 88, 138, 140, 163, and 248 of the Constitution. In the petition, the petitioners sought the following orders, and this is important. A, immediately upon the filing of the petition, the first respondent do avail all the material, including electronic documents, devices, and equipment for the presidential election within 48 hours. B, immediately upon the filing of the petition, the first respondent do produce, avail, and allow access for purposes of inspection of all the logs of any and all servers hosted by and or on behalf of the first respondent in respect of the presidential election within 48 hours. C, a specific order for scrutiny of the rejected and spoiled votes. D, a declaration that the rejected and spoiled votes count towards the total votes cast and in the computation of the final tally 
of the presidential election. E, an order for scrutiny, an audit of all the returns of the presidential election, including but not limited to forms 34A, 34B, and 34C. F, an order for scrutiny, an audit of the system and technology used by the first respondent in the presidential election, including but not limited to the Kim's kits, the servers, and the website stroke portal. G, a declaration that the non-compliance, irregularities, and improprieties in the presidential election were substantial and insignificant that they affected the result thereof. H, a declaration that all the votes affected by each and all the irregularities are invalid and should be struck off from the final tally and computation of the presidential election. I, a declaration that the presidential election held on 8th August 2017 was not conducted in accordance with the constitution and the applicable law, rendering the declared result invalid, null, and void. J, a declaration that the third respondent was not validly declared as a president-elect and the declaration is invalid, null, and void. K, an order directing the first respondent to organize and conduct a fresh presidential election in strict conformity with the Constitution and the Elections Act. And L, a declaration that each and all of the respondents jointly and severally committed election irregularities. And M, cost of the petition. The, the respondents On 24th August 2017, their first and second respondents filed a joint response, while the third respondent filed a separate response to the petition. They all opposed the petition and asked the court to find that IEBC conducted a free, fair, and credible election in which the first petitioner gathered, garnered 6,762,224 votes, being 44.74% of the votes cast, while the third respondent Garnered 8,203,290 votes, being 54.27 of the votes cast. In addition, the first petitioner and the third respondent also garnered at least 25% of the total votes cast in 29 and 35 counties, respectively. These are the results that the second respondent declared on 8th August 2017 as deponed in his affidavit. Having submitted on the petition and the responses, the respondents submitted that the petition is devoid of merit and should be dismissed with cost. They were supported by the second uh, interested party. On the amici submissions, the Attorney General, as the first amicus curiae, limited and delineated the following questions for his submissions. One, what is the proper constitutional and legal standard applicable to the conduct of presidential elections in Kenya as envisaged under both Articles 81 and 86 of the Constitution. Number two, what were the changes to the elections infrastructure post-2013 and their effect on the conduct of presidential elections to wit the Elections Laws Amendment Act, number three of 2016, and Election Laws Amendment Law, number one of 2017? Number three, how should the court treat rejected or spoiled votes in respect to votes cast in terms of Article 138.4 of the Constitution. Number four, what is the proper constitutional legal threshold for invalidating a presidential election under Article 140 of the Constitution? And number five, what remedies can the court grant in determining a presidential election petition under Article 140 of the Constitution? On its part, the Law Society of Kenya, being the second amicus curiae, and having been limited by the court to make submissions in regard to the interpretation of sections 83 of the Elections Act, urged that in interpreting the meaning and scope of section 83, this court should consider its history and constitutionality as well as its interpretation in the 2013 Raila Odinga case. The history of section 83 was thus traced section 28 of the National Assembly and Presidential Elections Act, which is now repealed all the way back to the English Ballot Act of 1872. Reference was also made to the decision in Morgan versus Simpson, 1974, three all England reports at 722, where the court stated that an election conducted substantially in accordance with the law will not be invalidated by a breach of the rules or a mistake at the polls which did not affect the result. 
Having then summarized the submission by the parties, the court crystallized from the petition, the responses, and the oral as well as written submissions, the following issues for determination. Issue number one, whether the 2017 presidential election was conducted in accordance with principles laid down in the Constitution and the law relating to elections. Number two, whether there were irregularities and illegalities committed in the conduct of the 2017 presidential election. And if they were, what was their impact on the integrity of the election? And number four, what consequential orders, declarations, and reliefs should this court grant, if any? Before addressing the four issues for determination, the court interrogated the emerging legal principles which it would use in addressing those four issues. And the first issue was the burden of proof. On that question, the court stated as follows. It is satisfied that the petitioner, that it follows that once the court is satisfied that the petitioner has adduced ev sufficient evidence to warrant impugning an election, if not controverted, then the evidentiary burden shifts to the respondent, in most cases the electoral body, to adduce evidence rebutting that assertion and demonstrating that there was compliance with the law. Or, if the ground is one of irregularities, that did not affect the results of the election. In other words, while the petitioner bears an evidentiary burden to adduce factual evidence to prove his or allegations of breach, then the burden shifts and it behoves the respondent to adduce evidence to prove compliance with the law. We shall revisit the issue of shifting of the burden later in this judgment. On the standard of proof, the court determined as follows. We maintain that in electoral disputes, the standard of proof remains higher than the balance of probabilities, but lower than beyond reasonable doubt. And where allegations of criminal or quasi-criminal nature are made, it is proof beyond reasonable doubt. Consequently, we dismiss the petitioner's submissions that the court should reconsider the now established legal principle as discussed in the judgment and find that the standard of proof in elections, election petitions is on a balance of probabilities. We recognize that some critics, some have criticized this higher standard of proof as unreasonable. But as we have stated in the judgment, electoral disputes are not ordinary civil proceedings, hence reference to them as sui generis. It must, it must be ascertainable based on the evidence on record that the allegations made are more probable to have occurred than not. The third question uh, which we had to address was rejected votes in a presidential election petition in Kenya. Having addressed the submissions by parties, the court noted as follows. In these circumstances, we cannot see how a rejected vote, a vote which is void, a vote that accords no advantage to any candidate, can be used in the computation of determining the threshold of 50% plus one. In our view, a purposive interpretation of Article 138.4 of the Constitution, in terms of Article 259 of the Constitution, leads to only one logical conclusion, that the phrase votes cast in Article 138.4 means valid votes. Consequently, we maintain this court's view in the 2013 Raila Odinga case and accordingly reject the petition's invitation to reverse it. The fourth issue of law which we, we had to address was the meaning of Section 83 of the Elections Act. Having interrogated that, that section, the court determined as follows. Having analyzed the wording of Section 83 of the Elections Act, bearing in mind its legislative history in Kenya and genesis from the Ballot Act of the UK, and also in light of the need to keep in tune with Kenya's transformative constitution, it is clear to us that the correct interpretation of the section is one that ensures that elections are a true reflection of the will of the people of Kenya. Such an election must be one that meets the constitutional standards. An election such as the one at hand has to be therefore both quantitatively and qualitatively in accordance with the constitution. It is one where the winner of the contest obtains more than half of all the votes cast in the election and at least 25% of the votes cast in each of more than half of the counties under Article 138.4 of the Constitution. In addition, the election which gives result, rise to this result must be held in accordance with the principles of a free and fair elections, which are by secret ballot, free from intimidation, improper influence, or corruption, and administered by independent body in an impartial, neutral, efficient, 
accurate and accountable manner under Article 81 of the Constitution. Besides the principles in the Constitution, which I've enumerated above, that govern elections, Section 83 of the Constitution of the Elections Act requires that elections be conducted in accordance with the principles laid down in that written law. The most important written law is, of course, the Elections Act. But that is not all. Under Article 86 of the Constitution, IBC is obliged to ensure inter alia, and we quote, whatever voting method is used, the system is simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, and transparent. The votes cast are counted, tabulated, and the results announced promptly by the result, uh, presiding officer at each polling station. The results from the polling station are then openly and accurately collated and promptly announced by the returning officer. And appropriate structures and mechanisms to eliminate electoral malpractice are put in place, including the safekeeping of election materials. That is a standard we shall use in analyzing the issues for determination. And therefore, with the above imperative constitutional legal principles in mind, we now like to turn to the facts of the case, starting with the first limb of Section 83. And in this, we shall be analyzing the violations of the principles in the Constitution and the electoral law that the petitioners are complaining of.